fire started to build and I just said, all right, I am going back into the kitchen. I'm focusing 100% of my energy on chocolate. I am going to figure out these techniques. I'm going to understand why they exist and I'm gonna try to make chocolates that a chocolatier would enjoy. <laughs> that was definitely the moment of difference in my career. My name is Kate Weiser, and I'm the owner of Kate Weiser Chocolate in Dallas. I always had a fascination with cooking. My father cooked amazing dinners on the weekends, and he really brought me into the kitchen. I absolutely loved making birthday cakes. So every year I kind of challenged myself to go more extreme and to experiment more. And I think, you know, food is definitely a gift. And that's something that my dad taught me growing up was if you want to show your love, you cook for them. If you're cooking sweets, you want to give them the ultimate experience. I went to culinary school, graduated March 2005, and I was out in San Francisco, and I was 19, little Kansas girl, pretty scared to death of just about everything. I ended up going back home. I had working for a restaurant. I was the first pastry-specific person that they had hired. I decided to move to Dallas for love, as a lot of people do. It was January or February of 2009. A lot of the restaurants were really tightening their belt. Getting into chocolate making, it was kind of out of desperation. <laughs> I was looking for a third or fourth part-time job just to make ends meet. And chocolate is a totally different animal than, than pastry. I was terrible at making chocolate. Just feeling like a total failure. I would just read every chocolate book I could find. I would YouTube everything I could YouTube. I actually started reaching out to other chocolatiers in the community who were fantastic, by the way, and sharing tips and tricks and their knowledge with me. So it was a really, really slow progression, but it, it slowly built this urge to succeed and this drive that I didn't even know that I had. So two years have gone by and I'm feeling pretty, you know, confident, you know, the ego's there. And someone called me and said, hey, you know, there's, there's this review on the internet. You know, you should, you should check this out. The critic had sliced every chocolate in half, basically put arrows pointing out all my mistakes. I walked around, dried my tears, I sat down, I reread it. And I was just like, this guy's right. Those moments, it's either sink or swim. It's, it's either I quit or I'm gonna do this right. It just made me take chocolate really, really seriously. And opening up my own chocolate shop, that idea just really took over my whole life. I just didn't, I had no idea how to get there. Trinity Groves is five years old now and you see restaurant incubators popping up all over the country now. But Phil Romano was really quite innovative when he brought it to Dallas. What they were looking for were brand new entrepreneurs, chefs in particular, that had a concept and had an idea, but had no idea how to make it come to fruition. It was a lot like Shark Tank. I BS'd my way through that, the entire numbers and profit and loss statement, but my enthusiasm and my passion and um, my eagerness and my willingness to learn, that really resonated with them. I wanted to create that where art meets chocolate. So having my name on the box was kind of similar to signing the canvas as an artist. What I think blows people's minds when they hear about what goes into making our chocolates. And I think after they hear about it, they understand why they're $2.50 a piece. <laughs> they're incredibly labor intensive. When we first opened, it was actually a four day process. You know, this ain't a cupcake. Like it's not ready in 20 minutes. <laughs> Most recognizable item is Carl the Snowman. You put him in a pot of milk, you watch him melt with your family and friends, and then he's hot cocoa for five to eight people. Carl got on Oprah's favorite things this past holiday season, and it was insane. How can we go from making 6,000 Carls to making 38,000 Carls? You know, what does that process even look like? As a whole, the business has grown really, really rapidly, really quickly. I still feel like more, 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 let's, let's do more, let's, let's expand quicker. So North Park was our second location. I love the idea of really small square footage where we can just 
provide gifts uh, for every occasion. So North Park Center was definitely on the dream list. Our third location, we found the perfect home in Fort Worth at the shops at Clear Fork. We've had amazing growth, but it was a daily struggle. It still is a daily struggle. Mo money, mo problems, you know, biggie smalls, he's right. <laughs> so we've got 35 to 40 full-time ladies, just girl bossing all over this place. <laughs> Women are key. Women are running this place. I mean, we're collaborative, we're creative, we're organized. We know how to run things. I see myself so much in young girls and little kids that walk into the store and their eyes are just big as saucers and they just can't believe it. I hope I inspire more female business owners, honestly. I, I hope that I inspire more girls to say, why not? I can do it too. That's what I want. I want just to be surrounded by boss ladies. <laughs>